Hello everyone and welcome to Sunburned Albino Ranks Every Boss in Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, from easiest to hardest. This list contains every boss throughout the whole game I'm playing. Anyone with a health bar is included, so we're covering all the bases. Start getting your hopes up, this video's gonna be amazing. Now, I've heard a lot of talk about how difficult Sekiro is compared to the Souls games, but I didn't have much trouble collecting all the footage you're about to see, so let's just get started, shall we? Number one, Yosemite Sam in the Minecart. The easiest boss in Sekiro is undoubtedly Yosemite Sam during the Minecart level. Every time he comes around towards you, all you have to do is lean into him and it does a third of his health. I don't know why that doesn't do an equal amount of damage to me, but I guess it's like headbutting someone super hard and giving them a skull fracture while you're only left with a slight headache. This fight takes about 30 seconds, and journalists are complaining that the game needs an easy mode? When are we gonna set a bar for the amount of skill you have to have before you can write about difficult games, am I right? Number two, Elmer Fudd. Elmer Fudd in the Stone Age is a lot like regular Elmer Fudd, only much less threatening with just a spear, although you do have to watch out for his thrust attacks, especially if you don't have Mickery counter yet. You can also see that Evolution didn't make a lick of difference in his intelligence. He is just as dumb here as he is in modern times. Simply jump through a hole when you see him coming at you, and while he peers inside for way too long, pop out another hole and run up and kick his ass. He won't hear you coming. The stealth mechanics in Sekiro need some work, if you ask me. After he falls for this three times, he's dead, or unconscious, or whatever, and you can go pick up the prayer bead he dropped. Number three, the bull. Killing vicious animals is a staple of Sekiro, whether it's dogs, chickens, or blazing bulls. You have to feel sorry for the creature, running around like its horns are on fire, simply because some heartless people wanted some entertainment. In this fight, I root for the bull to win. If the matador gets out unscathed, the crowd should be throwing tomatoes, not roses. Luckily, you don't have to be doing this very long. Number four, Muggsy in the bank. In this fight, you have to dodge around one of those fat, big-titted brutes chasing after you while one of the annoying monks with the homing missiles keeps raining down explosions on the ground. Muggsy is too chonky to run for long, so when he hunches over out of breath because nobody taught him portion control, you can run behind him and get a backstab death blow. The explosions can also hurt him if you redirect the missiles at him, too. This is another short fight that takes very little time. I don't think you even get a memory from it to increase your attack power, so it doesn't feel rewarding, either. Number five, Rocky and Muggsy on the roof. This time, Rocky joins the fray with a Tommy gun, which I didn't know existed in feudal Japan. Video games are great teaching tools. He still just sends Muggsy after you, who is exactly as fat as he was last time, meaning you don't have to run very fast away from him before you can get behind him. While he's knocked on the ground, Rocky will start freaking out and jumping up and down and lose all sense of situational awareness, allowing for a kick to his oversized hat, too. The next couple times you do this, Rocky will fire at you periodically with his gun. I wish we could get that as a shinobi prosthetic. Let's go back to the dilapidated temple and tell the sculptor to quit wheezing and get on that. I mean, sorry my deaths are inconveniencing your health. They ain't great for mine either. Maybe put some pants on while you're at it, or at least shave your yeti legs. Number six, double guards. Obesity is a recurring theme in this game, and they aren't even sumo wrestlers. When you approach, they wake up and say, HALT IN THE NAME OF THE KING! I certainly didn't expect British accents in feudal Japan either, but maybe it's just time for me to re-examine my assumption biases. If they wake up at the same time, they'll tire out at the same time, and you can get double critical hits on the back of their midriffs. When only one remains, he will go kind of berserk and burn plenty of calories, smashing his hammer everywhere. It's good exercise, but he can only keep it up for like six seconds before his stomach starts growling and his lungs explode. Take them both out, get the keys to unlock the gate, and use the summoner's idol to travel back to home base. Maybe treat yourself to a bowl of miso soup in real life. That shit's hella good. Number seven, ship battle Yosemite. For this boss, Sekiro takes some cues from Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Sea of Thieves to deliver a naval battle for the ages. You must catch Yosemite's cannon shots with your own cannon and then fire them back at specific parts of the ship to break them. Once Yosemite gets frustrated, he'll travel below deck and start sending out little floating bombs towards your ship, where you must then use the bellows prosthetic tool to blow them back at Yosemite's ship instead. He is very bad at noticing when the bombs are floating back towards him. Repeat this a couple times and clench your victory. Number eight, Muggsy on the roof. Personally, I think the resurrection mechanic in this game is a bit OP. You can die in the middle of a boss fight and just come back like nothing happened. Again, I don't know why people are complaining about the difficulty. The boss doesn't even regain health when it happens. I mean, how many lives do you need to beat a simple boss? 
Muggsy's showing off his athletic side in this level, jumping across gaps in the roof like they're nothing, and instead of getting tired, he throws bombs, which I guess you're meant to pick up and throw at him with point-blank range because he gets right up in your grill as soon as you pick one up. The Japanese perfected the art of kamikaze tactics, and this battle proves it as you explode both Muggsy and yourself with each bomb throw until he's dead and you resurrect yourself. Thank you, Dragon Blood Heritage. Sorry to everyone I just gave Dragon Rod to. Number 9, TNT Yosemite. People made a big deal about Sekiro being able to swim, but I'm not seeing it. This version of Yosemite is harder than the others because his cannon shots do extra damage and he rapid fires them like I didn't even know was possible. Whenever he goes, ooh, he'll throw a TNT barrel at you and then turn around and cover his ears waiting for it to somehow end up directly underneath his asshole before it explodes. Sekiro really goes all in with the slapstick comedy, not a genre I'd expect from it. This boss has way too much health. You have to blow him up five times when it should be three, and it's a process when he starts sinking like every single platform, especially when you can't make diagonal jumps. If you're having trouble, you can always go off somewhere else and try to get more prayer beads to increase your vitality and posture before initiating a rematch with better stats. Number 10, UFO Marvin Martian. People wanted sci-fi souls and they got it. This is the most frustrating fight in all of Sekiro for me, and that's coming from someone who quit streaming it halfway through to go make this dumbass three days late video instead. April Fools! This is why you're subscribed to me and also why you just unsubscribed from me. Marvin throws a bunch of green blobs out onto the field, and you have to run over and pick them up and throw them back onto his UFO before they sprout into those giant green birds. Amass enough of them on the saucer and their weight will bring it down and end the battle. The only problem is that the pick up mechanic in this game is absolute glitchy garbage. You can be mashing R1 next to a blob and you just won't pick the damn thing up in time before it sprouts. To add to the trash, the camera's finickiness, once you have a blob in your hand, makes it real hard to aim at the UFO. Compound all that with the set amount of time a bird can be on the saucer before it falls off and restores Marvin's health and you have a complete recipe for a nonsense, stupid, dumb, bullshit, waste factory boss fight. I hate it. Number 11, Laser Marvin Martian. While definitely less frustrating than the last fight, this one is much harder to avoid getting hit on. Like, taking damage, I mean, not that Marvin's flirting with you the whole time. Oh, Bugs, my, what long ears you have! I have a carrot in my pocket, would you like to reach in and grab it? It's a big one! You must duck and jump above lasers and electric floors before the weapon breaks down and Marvin tries to fix it with his ass out, like, Oh my, I hope nobody takes advantage of my exposed behind! Do that four times and you win. If this game had any stakes, I'd hate it, because a lot of it is just tanking hits and dying until you finally persevere. Number 12, Carrot Factory, Rocky, and Muggsy. We have seen altogether too much of these guys. The hardest boss in Bugs Bunny Lost in Time, I mean Sekiro, is Rocky and Muggsy at the Carrot Factory, because this time Muggsy has a gun too, and he does not stop firing that thing for any reason. The way the fight is supposed to go is that you press buttons to smash Rocky on the head from far away, then each time you do that, you have to wait for Muggsy to run out of ammo or whatever happens when he's just staring into his own gun all confused, grab a mallet off the wall and hit him with it. But because you have to hit him from behind or else he won't stagger or take damage, which will also refill his ammo, I guess, this process becomes super annoying because the AOE effect of the mallet sometimes acts like you've hit Muggsy in the dick instead of the ass. And I guess his ass is more vulnerable and I don't want to think about logically why that is. You also literally can't dodge his bullets if he shoots you while you're close, which you have to be to hit him with the mallet, which means if the game decides to not make Muggsy stagger, you are going to unavoidably lose 89% of your health. This fight sucks. You will die many times on it. If this game reset the boss to full health every time you died, it would actually, honestly, and genuinely be harder than anything in Sekiro. That is a fact. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and don't hate me. If so, you can like, share, and subscribe. Become a channel member for Discord access, among other things. Follow me on Twitter at sunburnedalbino, and I'll see you guys next time.